start my talk today so what are we going to learn today in this presentation so one is the basic what is tumor processes or mega processes why these terms are used a brief history the different type of implants uh, that are uh, provided indications and most important the advances in mega processes and this is a common question which is asked in theory exams and even during practical. So once you come to the management, you are supposed to know the basics of it. So when we talk about mega processes, actually this is the correct terminology, mega processes. So mega, you know, big processes. So finally, it is the implant which is designed to replace the resected large bone defect. It is not just about the bone defect, but it replaces your bone, soft tissues and other structures which provide stability. The tumor processes terminology is also the same. The only reason why we prefer to use mega processes because uh, once you are doing a tumor surgery, you are resecting a sarcoma or a benign tumor, then it is more aptly to say that it is a tumor processes. The If you are just using it for another reasons like for revision uh, replacement procedure for another bone defect due to other reason, then the mega processes will be the right term. So what do we mean by them? When we talk, when we say uh, it's a mega processes or this is a uh, implant, uh, this is a normal processes. So you can see uh, the X-ray on the left side that is a total knee replacement. In a normal scenario, if uh, there is distal femur and your proximal tibia, normally you replace the articular surface with the implants like you are seeing here. And on the other side, when there is sarcoma, you see that there is loss of the bone. So suppose if there is 15 centimeter bone loss and what structures are lost along with the bone when we resect a tumor, it's not just the bony loss. So what you see here, there is bone loss defect there is loss of all the surrounding structures which provide stability, like you have ligaments, M's for in a knee region, you have MCL or LCL, then you have cruciates, all these important ligaments are lost, the capsule around the joint. So all these important and critical structures which provide stability to your joint are lost. So doing with a conventional implant, sometimes it may not be possible to uh, make it useful after you resect your resection margins involve all these critical structures. So what do we need in that situation? So there is a spectrum. Tumor processes are just one end of the spectrum in between you may have uh, some ligament sparing or uh, enhancing type of implants, semi-constrained implants, and then finally the constrained implants. Similarly, when we uh, look at one of the common surgeries that we do is the total hip replacement. You cut the femoral neck and uh, the acetabulum part is uh, augmented with your acetabulum cup. But when we talk about resection in the tumor case, you resect everything. So what you see here right from your trochanter that is replaced by this prosthesis, then you see there is a part in between. You can see this uh, tapering part here, that is where the two different components articulate. And what structure you see inside, it is the stem. So we will go into the details, but just this was a broad overview, the conventional difference when we uh, talk about the type of implant that we use in uh, joint replacement and when we use it after a large bony defect. So though we are becoming more familiar in last two decades, but if we look at the history, uh, in 1940s, the first endoprosthetic was used by Austin Moore. And uh, uh, we can see on the internet also, these pictures are available from 1940s where uh, for a bony lesion, this implant was used. So probably it was one of the most primitive form where it was used. And nowadays we have come across a lot of new developments. So if I talk about the changes in the last two decades, uh, two to three decades actually. So one, initially in 80s, 1980s, 
and uh, up to 2000 and even now in india what we see commonly that sometimes people advise radical amputation for bone cancer but slowly the limb salvage is taking over and in fact the truth is that in more than 95 percent of my cases i plan for limb salvage surgery in bony cancer and what you see here is the metallic implant which is a mechanical type of uh, reconstruction what is further evolving is that now we are moving more towards biological reconstruction what you see here and this is a picture just after cryotherapy of the cancerous bone with liquid nitrogen so today we are not going to go into the deep of other forms but it is restricted to this tumor processes the most important change is not the use of limb salvage or the implant but it is about the survival of the patients so from the pre-chemo era, the chemotherapy was introduced somewhere in the 70s. The survival was only 20%, even with amputation. Even if the patient has a tumor or uh, cancer in the foot or hand, and if you amputate it one or two joints above, if that case is chemosensitive like osteosarcoma or, chemo or Ewing sarcoma, if you don't give chemotherapy, the survival is going to be very, very poor, whether you do amputation or limb salvage. Now, with the multimodality treatment, which includes chemotherapy, the survival is somewhere in the range of 75 to 80%. So, a very basic question is asked, what, what about if we do a limb salvage or if we do amputation? Whether the recurrence rates and survival are going to change? Is it higher risk with tumor processes? When we think just logically, then of course, uh, the tumor processes when we use when we use uh, a limb salvage surgery, the margins are going to be closer. But it has shown that there is no effect in survival rates. Either you go for amputation or you go for limb salvage surgery. In fact, limb salvage surgery provides a better quality of life.